Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new episode of ReZero starting Life in Another World Season 2 on episode 49 or just ReZero on part 2 of Season 2 which is on episode 11. Now this episode right here was actually really nice and you know like um, a lot of people really give big props to Amelia and etc. But someone of the biggest highlight in this episode besides Amelia and other people I believe Subaru deserves that big highlight, even though we all know that he's the main MC of our freaking series anyway. But that aside, let's just get the story right away. Okay? Okay. Let's go. We have two of the Amelia ends up shocked to see how everything is in, is in a snowy situation right now, you know? Or the entire environment is covered in snow, or there's a snowstorm. Then she sees the people out there and tells them, tells her that this guy, this guy in the crystal protected us. And it's actually Puck that Amelia realizes, you know? As the episode continues on in its own situation, we have to that Rosewall ends up having to like um wonder to himself after trying to tend to Ram right now, you know? And wonder like, what the heck should I do? What the heck should I do? Cause it looks like Rosewall is literally in shambles right now. After that Tomb of Wisdom just got burnt to ashes and not to mention Ram having to be like severely injured, you know? Yeah, Rosewell looks like he's in major mental shambles right now. Even right now, Puck realizes like um, that Rosewell managed to cast a spell before their battle, you know, for everything to snow. So it looks like to me, everything's going to be in a nasty situation right now, you know, that kind of thing. And right now, Puck is using whatever he can to try to stop that from snowing, you know, but unfortunately, that did not become the case. And you guys might be wondering, what the heck are you talking about? I'll get to that just in a moment. We have to that Amelia ends up going to a certain location where Ryuzu Shima's main body is at a certain location, you know? Eventually, we see, Ryu we see Ryuzu and Shima talking to Amelia, you know? Of course, Ryuzu is trying to ask Amelia to stop Shima from doing something, you know? We had to that Shima tells Amelia that she had a certain goal and that because Amelia completed her trial, she can now fulfill her role. I think that's like um, getting rid of the crystal or the barrier, you know? Whatever the case may be. Whatever the situation is, is concerned or whatever it is that's that's currently in in investigation or right in front of front of her, front of Amelia, this Shima or Ryuzu Shima says like um I'm here to fulfill my role since you fulfilled yours. I want you to take care of like um everyone else as the, to the best of your ability, you know, that kind of thing. Well that that aside with a couple of final goodbye words, she ends up disappearing with like um the um the crystal that was the main core of the barrier and then we have to it that um, Amelia asked the clones and Ryuji to lead her to, to lead her to Rosewall and Amelia. And we see too that Amelia is led to where Rosewall and Ram is at and was trying to is trying to get is trying to like, hey, what's up? How you doing? But as for Rosewall, he's not answering. That's how broken mentally he is right now because he lost a tomb of wisdom, Ram is gone. And you know, well, Ram, Ram is being tended right now, and she's still alive, just barely, you know, hanging by a thread of her life, if anything. And right now, Amelia's trying to tell Rosewall, we gotta go, we gotta go. But Rosewall's like, what's the point? I'm giving up right now. What the hell is the point? But Amelia's like, I don't care if you say that. We're getting the hell out of here, you know? But unfortunately, like I said, even though Puck was trying to stop the snow from happening, it's already too late. You know those infinite rabbits, you know? Yeah, those little, those little nasty little... Motherfuckers that would eat you alive and severely, what you may call it, painfully give you the worst death possible. Um, they are still they they came they come to the snow and they see Amelia there and we had to Amelia Amelia is using everything she can to try to protect everyone at the sanctuary at the graveyard you know whatever the case may be. Now the second half is still at the mansion and we get to see a backstory about Bieko or Beatrice you know. Where Emil, where Echidna or Echidna, how you want to pronounce her name, ends up telling Biako, "I'm gonna leave you with all the knowledge I have in this library and in this tomb of wisdom. I want you to wait for that certain per that person to show up eventually, okay?" And that was her last mother's wish before she had to leave Beatrice at Biako, you know. And we get to see Beatrice and Biako's backstory, a flashback, whatever the case may be, how we want to call it. Um, she ends up having to like have these like um strange. Things about, you know, Rosewall and then, what you may call it, um, remembering like how she, she kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And the Tomb of Wisdom she had was always blank, always freaking blank, you know, that kind of thing. And we see to it that Beatrice and Biakos thinks about Subaru because of what he has done for her, you know. And of course she did like 
have a big reunion with Puck or have a good relationship with Puck because she Puck might have a might have a relation to that other person, whatever the case may be. Whatever the situation is, Bieko or Beatrice seems like to me like um how, I don't know how to say it. She's been waiting for 400 years, man. I don't even know what kind of mental anguish she might have went through. But one thing for sure, Subaru was trying not to give up on her. Although Bieko or Beatrice was just trying to push him out. Leave me alone. This is it. I'm done. And we had to if Subaru does not give up and try to talk to Beatrice and Bieko. Saying like, I'm not going to be that person that you want, okay? That person is dead, gone, dead, is not going to come to you at all. And Beatrice and Bieko like, if you just lied to me or just tell me whatever... I would have just believed you, but I would have believed you either way. But you rejected me. How could you do that? You know, that kind of thing. And I see where Bieko and Beatrice is coming from, you know. Because the last order from her own mother was like, keep all my knowledge, wait for that person, it will show up. You know, that kind of thing. I don't know. But one thing for certain is that, um, super, one thing for certain that Bieko wanted, Beatrice, Bieko, Beatrice wanted, like, um, Subaru to be that person, you know? But Subaru says, I'm not going to be that person, but I want to stay with you. Come on. Let me get you out of here, okay? Stop with this madness and stop and let this go, you know? And we have to, we have to that after much tr convincing and tries to talk to her, unfortunately, Bieko and B or Beatrice says, no, get the hell out of here, you know? She ends up having to push Subaru out of the mansion because it's about to fall. It's about to be in shambles or it's going to th throw into ashes right now, you know? That kind of thing. But we have to that Subaru does not give up and knows there's one more door in the mansion and decides to go there. And therefore, Subaru finally finds the finds the last door to the mansion and asks Bieko to save him, you know? And then we have to that he wants to be with her. You're very strong. You're nice. You're cute. You got this good side of you. And we have to it that, like, um... We have to it that Subaru is like, hope that, I mean, Bieko or Beatrice ends up, ends up saying, what, you want me to just give up everything for, for waiting for 400 years? Do you have any idea what the hell I've been through mentally, anguishly, you know, that kind of thing? Do you even understand that? And Subaru is like, I don't, but I don't have any strength to help you, but I want to be with you, okay? Pretty much like, um, throughout this freaking, like, um, throughout this talk that Subaru's been having with Bieko or Beatrice, you know, he's pretty much telling her, like, Seriously, stay with me. Help me. I'm weak. I can't help you, etc. And I just want you to stay with me. And Bieko, Beatrice, like, do you not understand? We live longer. You live in a short life. In the blink of an eye, you'll be gone. But Subaru persists and becomes stubbornly weird to tell, willed to tell, to tell her that I'm going to stick in your mind forever. I'm going to make so many, mem so many memories to a point that you're going to not forget me, and it's going to be a lifetime, you know? It'll feel like an eternity or something. So, pretty much after all this talk here and there, Subaru was trying to tell Bieko or Beatrice, like, um, come on, I want you to stick with me. Forget about this thing, about this crush that you had on someone that never existed at all. Let's live together, let's do things together, please help me. And we have to that after much convincing, you know, we have to it that Bieko Beatrice finally decides to go with Subaru. While Otto and everyone else is concerned about Subaru, but he managed to survive with Bieko Beatrice finally deciding to go with him. And Bieko ends up having to teleport Subaru where Amelia is. And we have to it that Subaru like tells Amelia, hey, you step, you push yourself too hard, but you can step back and leave the rest to me. I got this, you know. As he as he holds Bieko or Beatrice's hand with it with with his, with her hand and his hand, she tells him, "You better get ready for what's to come, you know, because this is not going to end too well." And we have two of the Bie that Subaru's like, "Yeah, well, I'm freaking ready of what's to come, you know, etc." Now, <clears throat> in this episode, you know, Amelia, you know, we all know that she was a shy, weak girl, you know, she was very strong. There's no denying that. We all knew that. We we got to know her backstory and everything else all together. When it came to this season 2 or part 2, you know. We got to know how she is and what she is, you know. She's not strong mentally and she really needs that, like, um, push, you know. And Subaru is giving her that push, you know. Despite the fact, like, her being a pain in that, causing a lot of pain, causing a lot of issues and problems for everybody else. Always doubting herself, never had any self-confidence, you know. Subaru got her... Subaru got Emilio this far to, like, um, hey... 
it's time for you to step up. You you will mess up, you will fall, but going forward and walking ahead is all that matters. And how you want to end it is what matters. You know, same words that the same words that his mother used on him that he ends up using to Amelia. And then you know when it came to Rosewall, you know that guy. Wow, he we all guess he was really hooked up with. Ik Echidna for a very long time, for many, many years, hundreds of years, 400 years of anything. As for Bieko, she's been waiting for 400 years too, for that person, but that person never existed. And, you know, Garf, and then, okay, Garf, yeah, we could, he's, he's a cool guy too, but that's not the point, <laughs> okay. Anyways, Amelia grew up pretty greatly, you know, many people say that she is really meant to be a leader after what she has done and trying to give Rose one to the, trying to protect people, you know, that's really slick. As for Subaru, he's very stubbornly, he's very stubborn and very strong-willed, which represents what humanity's greatest strength is, is, is his own, or his or her own inner power or mental strength, you know. I mean, he, honestly... After many times Bieko pushed him out, he stubbornly decides to go after her, you know, because he doesn't want to lose anyone. He wants everyone with him. That's how greedy he is. Well, if I were in this situation, I'm pretty sure I'd be greedy too, you know? But that right there, the moment she keeps push, if she kept, if a person like that keeps, keeps pushing me out, you know, I think I would have given up anyway because, you know, I don't know what the situation is, but yeah. Subaru represents a lot of mental strength, you know. I mean, the guy's died more than what we, the more more than we could count, you know. He's been through worse, ugly deaths, but with some people at his side that helped him to get up and tells him to wake up, not to burden this all by himself, you know. This is this is like all out or nothing to try to make things right, you know. And that's how he's able to keep moving forward and try to make try to make it work, you know. Despite knowing what the future will bring, he always finds a way how to like him solve it in a certain way. But, you know, he's somewhere at the finish line, you know. But right now, his greatest obstacle is those infinite number of rabbits, you know. Let's not forget that these things multiply like a freaking... Like fleas in a freaking egg sack or cockroaches in an egg sack, you know. And in order to kill all of them, you gotta nuke them all in one blow. Pretty much, you're gonna need someone very strong. So I don't know how Subaru's gonna work this out, but he's gonna need someone who can really help him out. I mean, Bieko Beatrice might help out, but not to a point to fight an infinite number of freaking like um, little tiny carnivores who's ready to eat you alive in the worst possible way. So, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but this is all or nothing now. They're at the finishing line. It's now it's it's now time to like um, cross it, but you got to get rid of one more obstacle that blocks your way, you know? So, until then, people, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Toot toot!